I wrote the phrase that the drug of choice is harmonious with your characteristic way of reducing stress. So if you're a person who relieves stress in one way, you gravitate towards one drug or another drug. And then we started thinking about psychedelics and fantasy is also a way of reducing stress to step out of kind of the world as it is and to go into a fantasy. So that became the sort of third drug of choice with the psychedelics. And so um, we ran that for um, 10 years from 1992, and we gave kids, and we had great results. We had a great uh, evaluation. Uh, we could demonstrate that they really were getting better in terms of their family life. Their youth. They had reduced use of drugs. They had more improved uh, um, psychological uh, well-being. And so uh, that became a, a, you know, a model that really um, was a joy to be able to put that together. I, I talked to gang, former gang members and people who had, you know, uh, people who had addiction to everything that you could imagine under the sun. I say, how did you get better? And almost every time I get the same answer is that somebody cared about me. And um, that's kind of what it boils down to, is to have to make those linkages with people that they connect with and who reach out to them. And uh, you know, I wrote an article called Better Than Dope that I published in Psychology Today about Project Self-Discovery. And it was interesting. The editor said, well, this is a great, you know, I call it Project Self-Discovery, artistic alternatives to drugs and crime. And she said, it's not interesting. People are going to get bored. They're not going to read that. Artistic. I said, I'll give you something sexy. Uh, let's call it Better Than Dope. And she said, okay, that's it. So then a million copies went out with that. But then, uh, but how did I come up with that term? Because one of my students in the program, one of the participants, he was a, um, he had a lot of problems with, with um, alcohol, he used LSD regularly, he had, um, you know, failure in school, he was in a, shot in a gang thing, but he was a great artist, he, he was a graffiti artist, and um, he would take me around looking at the graffiti in Denver, and he'd say, Harvey, what do you think about that, what would they say about that, he, he was like really uh, very involved with what people thought about the art. And um, he uh, he came out of that art class one day. Loretta was his art teacher. She was like a grandma. She had all gray hair. She was probably in her close to 70 at the time. And he said, she's an angel. She's an angel. He, she could help him make turn his art into like professional art and frame it, help him frame it and stuff. And he said, he, come, he came out of that class one day and he said, Harvey, it's dope. It's dope. And I knew what he was talking about. He's, it was better than dope. It was like a drug. It was his drug of choice. And mm -hmm. to this day, we're friends. That kid and I are friends. And he became a tattoo artist. He has a very, you know, vibrant career as a tattoo artist. And but that's what happened yeah. to him. But it was better than dope. So that was the title of that article in Psychology Today: Better Than Dope. So what is better than dope? Right. What is better than dope? I mean, is there anything better than dope? If you have meaningful engagement of talents if you if you can engage yourself in a way that has meaning and purpose and makes you feel good then it's better welcome to the 2021 radical recovery summit presented by the killaby center for recovery this is lynn fraser your moderator this year our theme is feel it heal it a new paradigm of recovery featuring a diverse group of thought leaders and innovators people who are working on the ground in the new field of addiction recovery. Go to RadicalRecoverySummit.com to sign up and watch free.